Greetings and salutations, friends, and welcome, welcome indeed, to Lazy Content Time, is what I'm going to be calling this. I'm going to do a little mini-series on some of the knightly orders of the Empire. The reason why I'm calling this Lazy Lazy Content Time is because this particular week has been an absolute goddamn fucking mess with my real-life job suddenly having a lot, a lot to do, and it looks like it's going to be continuing for a while, let's just say. So, I simply flat out do not have time to uh, guide script, record, edit, etc. hour-long videos for the next couple of weeks at least, probably, so I will be doing something relatively simple uh, today, and uh, probably next week too, I'm afraid, uh, with nightly orders. Now, do not worry, I am slowly but surely chipping away at larger videos while I am doing this, but for the moment you'll have to satisfy yourself with something a little simpler. Now, today I figured we'd take a look at the Order of the Blazing Sun and the Order of the Black Bear. I'll probably do at least a couple at the time. Now, the Order of the Blazing Sun we'll start out with because they are a very, very interesting order. First of all, they look absolutely goddamn smashing in that arm of theirs. That must cost an absolute fucking fortune. But hey, they are Empire nobles, so if they do wish to pay for it, they can just increase taxes of the local peasantry after all. So at least that's nice. They can't tax them quite as hard as the Bretonians, which is sad, I'm sure they would agree, but nevertheless. The plebeians do, after all, have to pay their share to ensure that their masters can look absolutely fabulous. But back to the actual point. The reason why the Knights of the Blazing Sun are such a special chapter is not chapter, such an order, in fact, and we're talking Space Marines already, is not because they look absolutely smashing. Most of the orders have some pretty damn cool armor schemes. The reason why they are very, very unique indeed is because they worship a non-Empire deity. They worship Myrmidia, the goddess of war. Now, she's not an empire uh, goddess, so should to say. She has her roots in Telia and Estelia. She is a goddess from the so-called uh, classical age, depicted as the daughter of Verena and Mor. She has uh, tenuous links to the current imperial pantheon, but nowhere near the degrees that most other of the Imperial Gods have, and she doesn't have that much of a following in the Empire, which has led many to, um, quite strongly in fact, suggest that the Knights of the Blazing Sun are in fact heretics. But the Knights themselves have proven again and again their loyalty to the Empire, and uh, their loyalty is not really in question at the moment. Though it would be a fantastic little twitch, uh, twist if it turned out that they were chaos worshippers all along, but that would be somewhat silly, and uh, luckily the end times didn't go quite that far, even though it did fuck up pretty much everything goddamn else. At least it left this one small interesting part of the universe unsullied. But this raises an interesting question. What could possibly have happened to cause an Imperial Order of Knights to worship a foreign deity. That's not just some decision you make over the dining table with your fellow knights, you know, over, you know, toasts with a jam spread on them. You don't just go like, you know what, I really feel attached to this Myrmidia goddess. She has a wonderful bosom on her. And all of the other knights are like, oh, yes, indeed, good chap. She does have some wonderful chests and treasures she does have. And suddenly they start worshipping her. It's not quite that simple, although that would be amusing if there was indeed an order that was literally formed after a drinking party, swearing fealty to a particular tavern sign or something. That would be wonderful. Now, the reason I bring up Tavern Sign is because the reason why they turned to the Mangada's Myrmidia was because her statue fell on a bunch of people who were trying to murder the knights. You see, during the wars against the country of Araby, a bunch of knights from the Empire who were lending their aids towards the recapturing of the Temple of Myrmidia in Magaratia, the southern seaports of Estelia, 
they were surrounded uh, by a bunch of uh, very, very bad people indeed. The personal bodyguard of Emir Vazir the Cruel, the so-called Black Scimitar Guard. These guys were uh, bad people, let's just say, infamous for their cruelty. And being severely outnumbered, the uh, night's days looked to be numbered. However, something wonderful happened, you see. A violent earth tremor shook the temple, already damaged by the fighting, which dislodged the massive bronze statue of the goddess Myrmidia. This massive statue then proceeded to squish the Emir Vazir under its considerable bulk. And so, with their leader trapped and quite probably crushed under the massive bulk of a BBW, the Black Guard decided that this was a very, very bad place to be and legged it, thereby saving the Empire Knights. The Knights, in turn, then swore fealty to the BBW, which, by the way, stands for Big Bronze Woman, in case you had imagined anything else. And after that, they brought their worship of Myrmidia back to the Empire, and again, while a fair few Imperial citizens did wonder just slightly as to why a bunch of supposedly loyal Knights were bringing back a massive bronze statue of a half-naked woman, they pretty much just chalked it up to them acquiring some strange fetishes while off into the lands of Araby, and technically, they wouldn't be too far off the mark. After that, despite some interrogations by various uh, Sigmarites uh, factions, the knights have held true to their worship of Myrmidia and have proven themselves repeatedly in the service of the Empire through many, many, many battles, and were allowed to establish their shrine to the god in the heart of the city of Talabheim. Now, of course, many have also argued that perhaps the statue didn't fall because a foreign deity told it to fall and crush a dude, it might have collapsed due to some ridiculous consequences like structural damage, for example, but, well, Anyone who would suggest such a thing is clearly absolutely insane, because, well, obviously it was the god that did it, or at the very least, the knights think so, and, uh, well, you'd find it pretty damn complicated to argue with a dude in full plate armor wielding a two-handed sword, and so nobody's really bothered to raise the question with them directly. And so they still remain to this day as an imperial order, and before you start questioning anything, god fuck the end times, they still goddamn exist, and the city of Talonheim still exists. But enough of these heretical, nonsensical little bastards in their shiny ass plate, let's move on to an actual order of knights, shall we? Some proper manly men who made their reputation of fighting the vampires and the orcs in the world's edge mountains. I am speaking, of course, of the Order of the Black Bear, easily the most uh, boisterous order of knights within the Empire, giving even the White Wolves a run for their money when it comes to the art of drinking vast amounts of beer, and then going out into the local countryside to beat the living shit out of anything they consider to be not proper human-like. Now, being located as they are in Averland, a relatively short ride away from Sylvania and the World's Edge Mountains, you'd think there'd be plenty of opportunities for an angry bunch of heavily armored dudes to find some ways to, you know, work out their aggressions on the local wildlife, but turns out that even this relatively dangerous part of the Warhammer world is not quite capable of producing enough stuff for them to bash over the head with heavy swords. As such, they have developed several tournaments of a martial nature, where they test things like swordsplay, horsemanship, and drinking, of course, jousting, and a particularly wonderful practice, namely halfling cursing. Now, that's not halfling cursing, as in yelling bad things at halflings, it's they take a halfling, they put the halfling outside into the forest, and then they have large, angry dogs chase down the halfling and eat his ass. which I don't exactly know why this has anything to do with knightly behavior. It would be much better if they, you know, mounted their horses and gave them all cricket bats and then went after the halfling so that, you know, they'd have to injure him a little bit before setting the dogs on him at the very least. Then the knights would have something to have fun with, but eh, 
who am I to argue? Sadly, however, this glorious and quite honestly fantastic tradition was outlawed in the Imperial Year 2402, an absolute crime against any kind of entertainment, if you ask me. I mean, come on, fuck the halfling. Who gives a shit about him? But never mind. And still, it's not quite as bad as in the province of Stirland, where they occasionally hang halflings from trees and use them as piñatas. Though, again, this is also a practice that they f quite furiously deny. Of course, they don't hang little halflings from trees and beat them with sticks. No, 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 no. They beat straw dolls with sticks. Obviously, the fact that the straw doll occasionally you know, screams and pisses itself is mere details and, in worst case, complete and utter slander. But we were talking about the Order of the Angry Black Mammals here, so let's try to get back on that, shall we? Now, the Order itself is renowned for their savageness, because, well, they're an order based on a bunch of angry black bears. You would expect them to be somewhat, um, aggressive in their nature. However, no one really knows where the Order's name originate from, or the very least, no one truly knows. The Order itself claims that the name comes from a time long past, when an impoverished knight with barely any armor or weaponry had to wrestle a bear with his bare hands, pun intended, to the ground to save a young, fair, noble lady, who then gave him a gift of money, saying, well, you're a one handsome, strong old man here. Have this person build yourself an order of knighthood, and so he wandered off and did just that, and he then presumably named the order after the lady's crotch. Oh shit! No, um, <clears throat> I mean after the bear he wrestled. wrestled yes, that that was it. Yes, <clears throat> and to this extent, at the beginning of every grand tournament held by the black bears, the current grandmaster is uh, removed of all weapons and armor and sent into the cage with a giant bear. Again, I'm talking about the animal here. And he has to wrestle it to the ground in front of the cheering crowds. Oh, occasionally, of course, the bear comes out on top, especially if the Grandmaster has been around for a few years and probably shouldn't be wrestling bears at the tender age of 50. But the Grand Order consider these to be relatively minor details and, at worst, merely an indication that perhaps they should find themselves another Grandmaster. So... Either way it works, really. If the bear eats him, well, they'll just have to find another Grandmaster. If the bear doesn't eat him, well, that was a very, very impressive display of violence, was it not? Some other violently suppressed sources, however, have a slightly different story. You see, they argue that there was no young noblewoman, and that there was no great Bialak bear either, or other furry creatures, they argue that the Order's name bears a suspicious resemblance to a tavern in Iverheim that is also named the Black Bear. The Order of Nice themselves do not take this with any kind of humor whatsoever, however, which in the eyes of those who think that maybe this is a little bit suspect is only proving the point. But as we have already said, Arguing with a massive man in plate armor using a heavy two-handed sword is often a very bad way of getting across one's argument. And so, this has been a fairly short episode, considering what I'm usually known for, but sadly, real-life issues will have to take precedence over YouTube, I am afraid. There will still be some Let's Plays relatively frequently, though, because I have a relatively nice uh, backlog of that stuff, and, well, it's just frankly a whole awful lot easier to produce than these law videos. I should hopefully be back in good old-fashioned form in not too long, though, and you will be getting historical videos because I do have those pre-recorded as well. So, hopefully we'll be able to get back to proper length uh, videos in not too long. Until then, I have been Arch, thank you very much for listening, and I do hope to see you soon. Have a good day.